as someone that doesn't speak French, you really have to make it clear that, yeah, you're speaking English. And you know what, I was in such a mood this morning when I woke up, seeing the rain and the wind, and you think, oh, sod this, I can't be bothered to film anything today, but <laughs> look what's happened. <laughs> and welcome back to Montreal in Canada. This video is the fifth part, yes, the fifth part already of my Montreal series. And today is a somewhat grim and miserably gloomy Thursday morning in this city. It's just like England, you know, grey skies, miserable, wanna kill yourself. But you know what, you can't always be lucky with weather. You know, I've been quite blessed with filming locations in the past, you know, Thailand, Indonesia, Mexico, where you're pretty much guaranteed loose guys every day but this video is a perfect example of the fact that it's not always like that this is real life it's not like the instagram influencers show you on instagram you know so today we are in little italy which is where i'm staying i said i was going to do a video here and i was originally going to do like a full food video which i've decided to kind of split in two because it would just be too long otherwise and there's two places in this video i'm going to which have been recommended to me so this is very much a recommendation video the first one is a market and we're going to go and have some food in a little bit so i think i'm here all right i was totally miserable this morning but now my mood has completely changed because i'm at marche jean talon more on that in a moment i can hear a clarinet behind me i played the clarinet for six years i was in an orchestra it's my only talent music yeah youtube is not my talent <laughs> but it looks so huge inside i'm so excited i haven't been to a market like this i don't even know when the last time i went to a market like this was but let's go and have a look inside clarinet So just initial reactions of Marche Jean Talon. You've got this nice little courtyard area, I guess you would call it, where you can sit down on a bench and eat food, surrounded by all these plethora of food vendors. I've read that there's over 300 food vendors in this market, and this market dates back to 1933, so very old. And even in the winter, it's in operation, which having been here in the winter, I know how horrific the weather can be. So. Um, hugely impressive look at it it's massive look at all the fruit and veg man oh how exciting a rapers amazing i was in colombia last year i lived in medellin for about three months a rapers are a really common venezuelan dish i stayed with a venezuelan guy oh <laughs> for three months and we had a rapers every day so this market i think just sums up the diversity with food in Montreal. Balkan food as well. Once again, another place I'm going. I'm going to be in Belgrade very soon in Serbia. I am 31% Balkan, so I'm going to be seeing a lot more of this food coming up. This olive place is great. So all these different fillings, cheddar, chorizo, jalapeno. And look at all the olives down here. Never seen so many olives in my life. And you've even got the little peppers stuffed with feta cheese there. Beautiful. Um, I'm in by the main fruit and veg forest bit, and um, you know what? It very much reminds me of a cross between. Mercado Jamaica in Mexico City and also London so in London there's I think Spitalfields Market I think I went there in a video once um, which is very much like this like kind of artisan style places you can sit artisan products things like you know little tubs of honey and things like that you know um, yeah very much reminds me of that so uh, so much diverse stuff you can get. This is what I mean about the word artisan. The, at least, you know, when I think of the word artisan, I think of these things. So these are like little handwritten chalkboard signs, maple butter that we've seen before, maple syrups everywhere, apple syrup as well. And look how colourful it is. And in terms of prices, I think it's kind of quite similar to the UK. So if you're from the UK, you'll have an idea of what I'm talking about. So things like avocados, two Canadian dollars. You know, millennials have got to have the avocado on toast. 
I hate avocado, by the way. I'm a bad Mexican. <laughs> Look, Colombian arepas with beef. $10 though for an arepa. Plantain. Oh my god. Dios mio. <laughs> Grande. <laughs> so before we go, I thought, sod it. I'm only going to be here once. It's time to get some food. So I've got what I just said about an arepa, Colombian. It is $10. So I was thinking like daylight robbery here. Um, Ten dollars for an arepa, ridiculous. <laughs> but look at the size of it, and look at how much filling it's got in it. You now I used to have arepas with um, just simple, like tuna, cheese, sweet corn. Um, I'm getting so many memories from Medellin and Bogota right now. Beautiful. Let's tuck in. So this wasn't going to be a food video, but now it is. Beautiful. And um, you know what? I was in such a mood this morning when I woke up. We've seen the rain and the wind, and you think, oh, sod this. I can't be bothered to film anything today, but. But look what's happened! <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that is beautiful. And the arepa, let me have a bit more of that. Oh! It's just how I remember it. Doughy, kind of spongy, but crispy on the outside. It's almost as good as my friend Leo's arepas, but not as good. Mm. Mm. And that beef is exceptional. And it's just beef. And there's no vegetables, no crap like that. You know, I don't like vegetables. Literally heaven. You know, you get burgers and stuff, but you know, who wants a burger when you can get an array park? <laughs> Lighting in this weather is atrocious. And of course, we have another detour sign, which is Montreal personified. Anyway, um, yeah, so before I get on the subway, I just want to highlight something. So a lot of people do comment on my accent. I'm from London, um, particularly when I was in Mexico and the States. A lot of people aren't familiar with British accents. So earlier I said Little Italy, right? You might be expecting me to say Little Italy, which be, would be the received pronunciation way of saying it. But you notice Little, glottal stop on the T's, and I don't pronounce the L properly. So a bit like in the word football, I would say football. Right, but then Italy, I would say Italy. So I pronounce the L in that word. So uh, little Italy. And when I'm in London next week, you'll be seeing a lot more, hearing a lot more of that. Got me accent in it, mate. I'm at Jean Talon station, going down towards Mont Royal again, which is where I was in the last video, the Mexican taco one. And then, um, yeah, I just got a regular ticket. So I did talk about this in another video. There are multiple ways you can get the subway in Montreal. You can get an Opus card. You can buy just one ticket on its own, which is three fifty, I think it is Canadian dollars. Um, but if you buy two, like the return one, it's you, it is cheaper. So it's like six fifty or something. So um, I'm going to walk back anyway. So I'm just being lazy right now. Um, yeah. So I need to buy one. Right, I'm back down Saint Denis. The Mexican place is literally just up there where I was in the last video. But um, over there is a um, smoked meat place, Putin. But not today, Hans. We've been there in previous videos. Well, not those places, but other ones. Oh, it's time to cross. The place I'm going is um, just up there. It was recommended by Easy, who is a Mexican subscriber. Hmm, where is it, amigos? I went up that way. Henri Jul I'm sorry, Henri, Henri Julien and Mont Royal, following Google Maps. But I think I've just found it. Don't ask me to pronounce it. I can just about say the word patisserie. But um, yeah, you can see it on the side. <laughs> so this patisserie, I believe, is owned by a French guy from Normandy. So it's not like, you know, Montreal bakery items, but it's French related. And um, they do so many things apparently. And there's something that I want to see if they do. There's three types of quiche. I love quiche. Quiche is the best. So let's see what we can find. Rustic, you know, it's about the green paintwork behind me, and um, it's got like the 
lettering in the, in the windows, and it feels like it's like one of those like French artisan cafes that you would get in Paris. I'm going to Paris in two days, by the way. I cannot wait. And um, as I said in previous videos, in the Hochelaga Maison Urbain, one key thing about Montreal is the fact that it is an area where independent businesses can thrive. Not just you know like regular clothing shops or whatever, but cafes like this. It really sets Montreal apart, I think, from other cities in the world where you can just go to big Starbucks or something. I love a Starbucks, but you know, this sort of place is, um, is right on my street. As well as quiches, quiche de rain, and there's a cheese one, and onion, cheese and onion, that's it. Um, there's also like croissants and the usual kind of sweet pastries and stuff that you will find in this sort of place. It's just beautiful. And I've got this little seat in the corner. Amazing. And I've also got quiche Lorraine. Let's have a look at it. Now, coming from England myself, I'm used to quiches on a regular basis, but you know, nothing like this. The quiches I would have would be like quiche Lorraine from a supermarket, which are just atrocious in comparison. They have um, warmed it up for me, so caliente. Ooh, so ham, cheese, the usual, or is it bacon? The usual um, fillings with the quiche Lorraine. It's also got an oniony taste as well. Yes, there's onions in it, I believe. I don't normally like onions, as I said before, but um, this is good. Mm. Creamy, meaty, a bit of a meaty taste as you chew. Wonderful. And the pastry is nice because it's not it's not like soggy bottom, you know. It's 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 what's the word? Firm, that's the word. But it's also moist. Kind of I'm going to stop speaking with my mouth for now. Promise. That place was beautiful. I haven't been paid to say that, by the way. I did have to pay for my quiche, $3.75, FYI, which actually I think is quite a decent price, considering some of the other places in Montreal are quite pricey and costly. But you know what? That was great. I love that. Easy is the best. That's why it's great to get recommendations from people. Let's just take a look around for a moment, you know? We forget to do that when we travel. Wombat pardon. What does that mean up there? Awesome artwork with this, that, whatever that is, some blue animal thing with a tree coming out of it. Amazing. And one thing I haven't said about Montreal is the fact that in the summer you have these like little areas outside cafes and stuff. I'm not sure if they were there in the winter. I honestly can't remember, but obviously, you know, you wouldn't want to sit there in the winter. And look at the little shops, you know, these little, what's the word I'm looking for? Unique shops with this wonderful paintwork on. And um, just another classic street. So if you look at my Instagram, I, I feel like I'm addicted to taking photos of walls <laughs> with graffiti on and you know up against that fire hydrant or water whatever it is and um yeah i could walk around looking at this graffiti all day one thing i forgot to mention about that bakery was that the staff were awesome you know the woman was great i quite fancied the bloke actually a little bit only a little bit don't tell him um, <laughs> um and the thing i wanted to highlight which i haven't mentioned is the fact that yes montreal is French and English speaking but primarily it's a French province so generally 99% of the time when you first speak to someone they will speak French to you so as someone that doesn't speak French you really have to make it clear that yeah you're speaking English because sometimes I have had people ask me am I speaking English or French because I can mumble sometimes when I go to shops and stuff but so that's my advice of the day just be clear that you speak English only. Right I'm back home I'm not gonna lie it's the next day different t-shirt fluffy hair and unshaven but never mind, I got home and forgot to film the rest of it, basically. Classic. So that market, awesome. You know, if you're coming to Montreal, that is one place that has to be on your list. I would totally recommend it. And I know it's not like in the centre of town, but sometimes with travel, you know, you do have to go a bit further out to find those gems. And that's exactly what it is. It is the gem. The gem of Montreal. Well, one of them. One of the many. And, um, you know, the bakery I went to, thank you to Easy for recommending that, because that quiche was beautiful. Top notch. Love a bit of quiche. And... On the subject of quiche, you know, I want to talk about my future plans. So I did highlight this in a live stream recently, but I understand not everyone's going to watch that because they, they often go on for quite a long time. But in terms of my um, future plans, you're probably going to watch this video when I'm actually in Paris. So today is my penultimate day in Montreal. I leave for Paris tomorrow. I'm then going to London for a couple of days. I've just booked my flight to Belgrade in Serbia, which I cannot wait for because I'm, I'll be doing lots of research, right? And that's the thing that some people don't realize is that I'm always planning so far ahead in the future. I'll then be in Bali in the middle of August. So the next five weeks are chock-a-block with travel. Um, so yeah, if you've got any tips, any of you that have been to many of those places, obviously I've been to London because I'm from there, never been to Paris before. What am I gonna think about Paris? Who knows? And there is one more video coming from Montreal after this, which I'm filming tomorrow before my flight. So, um, yeah, I can't believe how quickly it's gone. 
crazy, a month in Montreal. So anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, as always, just like, comment and subscribe, all the usual malarkey, share it with your friends, check out the rest of the playlist as well, as I said at the beginning. So um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll um, catch you later.